Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be reviewing this Kai Wu Tycoon Slim 3D Printer. Last year, I reviewed the Kai Wu Tycoon 3D Printer. It seems this printer shares many of the same components as the Kai Wu Tycoon, such as the super sturdy base without any manual leveling springs, a dual Z axis with a timing belt to synchronize both stepper motors, a one piece design metal direct extruder, linear rods on the Y axis, a linear rail on the X axis, a 3D touch auto bed leveling, and it supports both micro SD cards and full size SD cards. As for the differences, there are some features that have been removed, like the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module, the metal box frame, the double aluminum extrusion Z-axis, the linear rods on the Z-axis have been replaced by rubber pulley wheels, and the glass bed has been replaced by a magnetic print surface. Besides cutting features, Kaiwu has also added some features. For example, they increased the Z height from 230mm to 300mm, and added a belt tensioner on the X-axis. The price of this slim version is $379, which is $80 cheaper than the Tycoon. There are some other minor changes, like how the X-axis linear rail is installed at the front instead of on top of the X-axis aluminum extrusion, and the part cooling fan has been moved from the back to the side. I will test out this Kaiwu Tycoon Slim 3D printer and compare it with the original Tycoon to see if there are any differences in terms of print quality. I would like to thank Kaiwu for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. We have the gantry, the base, a touchscreen, a filament holder, a power cord, a roll of 200 gram sample filament, the user manual, some tools, and spare parts. First, I will connect the gantry to the base, starting with the right side. Insert two M5 by 50 mm screws to secure the gantry, but don't tighten them all the way yet. Do the same to the left side, and then go back to tighten the screws on the right side. Next, I will install the timing belt to synchronize the dual C axis. Just connect the belt to these two wheels, fix the set screw on the flat side of the stepper motor shaft, and do the same to the other side. Connect the ribbon cable from the motherboard to the screen, and then mount the screen with two M4 by 16 millimeter screws. Install the filament holder at the top, and use the T-nuts and screws that came with the filament holder to secure it. I will install the roller facing the back of the printer so the extruder won't bump into the filament roll when printing with the maximum Z height. Use the cable clip to secure the cable on the left side of the gantry with an M4 by 6mm screw. Now we can connect some cables starting with the X stepper motor. The X limit switch is located inside the cover, so it will be easier to use a long nose plier to connect it. Then, do the Z-axis stepper motors. Do a final check on the X-axis and make sure it's smooth and the belt tension is right. Do the same to the Y-axis. There is no tensioner on the Y-axis, but the tension seems fine as it was adjusted before shipping. OK, insert the SD card, connect the power cord, and we can turn on the printer. It looks like it came with the standard Marlin touchscreen interface. Click on the XYZ position bar to enter the motion menu. I will home the printer to confirm that all the limit switches, stepper motors, the bed, and the leveling sensor are working. OK, we can now set the Z offset. Click the bottom right corner to bring up the Z offset menu. It seems it was also preset at the factory, but let's move the Z axis to zero and do a simple paper test to confirm that the number is good. Move it down 10 millimeters, change the scale to 0.1 millimeters, and move it until the Z axis is close enough to the bed. Then change the scale to 0.01 millimeters until it reaches zero, where the nozzle should slightly scratch the paper. So I will just keep this Z offset value. Next, let's do auto bed leveling. The 3D touch sensor will probe 16 points on the bed and save the value to the EEPROM. After that, we can heat up the nozzle and load some filament. Once the temperature reaches 200 degrees, we can insert the filament into the filament sensor and then turn the wheel to load it. Okay, 
It seems everything is fine, so we can do some test prints. I will start by printing something from the micro SD card. Let's print this XYZ calibration cube. The G code is sliced without the line at the edge of the bed to clean the nozzle, so it starts right away with the skirt. The filament residue is left directly on the skirt, but the first layer still seems fine. It sticks really well, and the Z offset distance is good. This is an enlarged cube, which is about 30 by 30 by 30 millimeters. The layer lines of the surfaces all look good. I will now go to the computer and set up this printer in Cura. Select Add Printer, and since there is no profile for the Tycoon Slim, I will just select Ender 3 Pro and change a few numbers. Rename it to Tycoon Slim. The print volume of this printer is 240 by 240 by 300. I will also add G29 to the starting G code as the firmware is just standard Marlin. It should have no problem supporting G29 to do auto bed leveling before every print. That's all we need to change. Let's start with a simple 3D Benchy. I will leave all default settings except for changing the retraction distance to 1mm and the speed to 30mm per second. Generally, I use these numbers for a direct drive extruder. Let's slice this model and start the print. As expected, the standard Marlin firmware and Marlin touchscreen interface can run G29 to do auto bed leveling without a problem. Let it finish and we will see the result. I'm using Prusa Galaxy Black PLA Filament. This is one of my favorite PLA filament that has some shiny dots on the surface. Besides the tiny bit of stringing, this Benchy looks really nice. Next, I will print this cat. This print may require support, but the area between the head and the body should be fine. The first layer also only has a small contact area with the print surface, but I will just print it without using a brim and see how it looks. It seems the feet are all good, and even the small first layer can stick pretty well. This cat is printed really well, and without using a brim or support, the surface and layers still look good. Afterwards, I will try some PETG filament. I'm going to print this set of spinning tops. Just change the nozzle temperature to 235 and the bed temperature to 85 and leave all default settings. It will take around 5 hours to finish. Let's do a preview and start the print. Usually, PETG sticks a little bit to the nozzle, but for functional parts, it should be fine. As you can see, this thing can spin for a very long time. After almost two minutes, it finally stops. The tip at the bottom is not perfect, but it works and is usable. Next, I will print this Arc de Triomphe. After resizing it to 50% of its original size, it will take seven hours to print. Most parts of this model should be fine printing with no support, apart from this area which will print in the air but I will just print without support, and the worst we can expect is to have to cut out these few lines, and the model at the top should be fine.
as expected, these lines were printed in the air, but they didn't affect the rest of the print at all. After I pulled them away, the model still looks pretty nice. Then, I will print a phone stand. And if the printer is accurate enough, these connectors can move freely for you to adjust the angle of the stand. As you can see, the stand can move freely without any problems. Next, I will print a headphone holder using ABS filament. I can use this holder to mount headphones and even use it to mount laser engravers on the wall. I will set the layer height to 0.3 millimeters. I don't need the details, I just need it to be functional and print fast. With these settings, it can finish printing in less than two hours. This type of magnetic sticker sheet print surface sticks really well. I don't need to apply any glue on the bed to print ABS, and it sticks perfectly. The 0.3 layers don't look as nice as 0.2, but it prints faster and it's functional. Finally, I will print some flexible filament. I will print a set of this cable string relief as those iPhone lightning cables always break at some point. This set includes the main body and two bands to secure the connector. They are flexible enough to fit with the connector to make the cable more durable. Okay, these are the parts I have printed so far. Let's talk about what I like about this printer. This printer is easy to assemble and the print quality is really good right out of the box. Personally, I am curious about the print quality difference between the Tycoon Slim and the original Tycoon, as the original Tycoon has an even more sturdy frame with double aluminum extrusions and linear rods on the Z-axis. Both printers use linear rails for the X-axis, and for the Y-axis, they both use linear rods with a super sturdy base. They also have the same extruder and hot end. So, the only difference should be on the Z-axis. I am expecting that the original Tycoon should print better layers. So, I printed the same enlarged calibration cube with the same filament on the original Tycoon. Honestly, I can't see any differences from a normal distance, but when I zoom in really close, you can see the layers on the Tycoon are slightly better. However, it really depends on how you inspect them. Under a magnifying glass, the original Tycoon is slightly better, but otherwise they just look the same. The direct extruder of this printer works really well. Using 1mm retraction distance and 30mm per second retraction speed, I can't see any stringing issues even when printing with the default Ender 3 profile in Cura. Feeding filament with this wheel is also really easy. The print surface sticks very well, and it has no problem printing ABS without using a glue stick. The touchscreen is easy to use, and it just has the standard Marlin touchscreen UI. The stepper drivers have also been upgraded to TMC2209 on all the X, Y, and Z axes and the extruder. Besides the fan noise, it's completely silent. The print height is also taller than the original Tycoon, as it was increased from 230mm to 300mm. So, the print volume of this Tycoon Slim is 240 by 240 by 300 and compared to a standard size printer like an Ender 3, which is 220 by 220 by 250 the total print volume is about 42% larger. It came with a 350 watt power supply, which is better than the standard 280 watt power supply on most budget printers, so it heats up slightly faster. However, I would like to suggest some improvements on this printer. First, using the standard Marlin touchscreen UI is okay, but the manufacturer made a simplified version that hides all the advanced features from the screen menu. Those features are the best part of the stock Marlin touchscreen UI, while you can get all of the features from the classic LCD on a touchscreen, but with this simplified version, you can't adjust the step value for the stepper motors, you can't adjust the speed, acceleration, and junction deviation, and you can't even preheat the filament in one click. I suggest that the manufacturer can add an option to toggle advanced features on screen so beginners won't be confused by so many options. At the same time, advanced users can still get what they need. 
Second, adding an x-axis belt tensioner is good, but not good enough. After months of printing, you may still need to adjust the belt tension sooner or later. This applies to both the x and y axis. Of course, you can still remove the base, cut the belt, and retighten it to increase tension, but as a new generation 3D printer, it would be nicer to have a set of belt tensioners on both the x and y axis. Third, I would be happier to see a dual gear extruder. The single gear 1 to 1 ratio metal extruder is doing alright, but when you need to print faster or print with ultra flexible filament, you may need a 3 to 1 gear ratio dual gear extruder that can grip and push filament to the hot end to melt enough filament to keep up with the speed. Finally, it doesn't support Wi Fi printing as the ESP8266 Wi Fi module was removed. Since the Wi-Fi module costs almost nothing, I would rather pay a few more dollars to get the module back, so I can use the MKS Cura plugin to print directly from the computer. This is also one of my favorite features from the original Tycoon, and I put the link to my review under the description. In conclusion, the Tycoon Slim is still a solid and good quality printer. It's not as sturdy as the original Tycoon, but it is still more sturdy than most budget 3D printers in the market. It's quite beginner friendly, and it just takes 10 minutes or less to assemble in a few simple steps. There's no tweaking required to get pretty good print quality. If you're interested in this printer, I put the link to it as well as the original Tycoon under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.